Ladies and gentlemen, looking at you on the screen is, I refer to her as my second ex-wife. <laughs> that is Ronnie Bennett from Lake Oswego, Oregon. And uh, we were we were talking earlier about the fact that in in Oregon you can get you can get pot for recreational purposes, but you can also die with dignity by having them prescribe a suicide pill, right? Yes, you can do both. Yeah, you could like like. <laughs> I don't know about both together, but <laughs> first you sh well no my suggestion is first you smoke the pot then you take the pill. <laughs> well, that would be a good order, okay, yes. so you'll be high while you're going. What a wonderful state you live in. Where do I get one of those? <laughs> We're not the only one. There are five or six or eight others, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but you know, when you go to the dispensaries, you have to go to a special store. Yeah. And when you go to the dispensaries, it's, it's, they're as beautiful and clean and out as pharmacies. And, and the buds are in their, these little bowls, and they each have names. And the people just, they are so knowledgeable. They're mostly very young, and they're very knowledgeable about this kind does this. This is good for music, and this is good for sex, and this is good for aches and pains or whatever, you know. Or let's, it's, it's really quite an experience to go there. It's a whole different kind of place. Yeah, yeah. You mean the pot store. This is not the death store. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, the pot uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so so really, uh, you uh, you you have um, uh, you have the best of both worlds up there, I guess. You know, so that's good. That's cool. Um, so anyway, um, uh, uh, what is, what is the biggest issue among your older readers? Now you see, your readers are older. Uh, yes, although I would imagine are. you have a few Most young people. Pretty old. Well, yeah, but I would imagine you have some young ones who are curious about what it's going to be like. You know, um, people in there. I have a few readers in their twenties, thirties, and forties. Some people think is old. I don't anymore. <laughs> um, and yeah, I would say about five to ten percent of my readers are young. Yeah. So uh, uh, being being, uh, but the uh, since you basically have older older readers, what are their major concerns right now? In other words. Uh, in my case, I would say it would probably still have to do with health and with with drug plans and 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 uh, what's going to happen to Medicare, what's going to happen to uh, things like that. Would that, would that be the major topic that they're interested oh, in? No, I think that old people. I think that old people are interested in all the same things that young people are. Um, we don't have to worry if you're retired, if you're that old, you don't have to worry any longer much about, you know, jobs and keeping your job or finding a new job or getting a raise and all of those complications that we spend most of our life doing. Um, health takes, you're right, health takes a greater part of our time because most of the health problems in, in the world are, you know, old people have. Doesn't mean young people don't get sick. But um, but you get sicker as you get older, so that's important, and they make it very difficult. The programs, uh, the insurance companies, Medicare, uh, Part D in particular, make it as difficult as possible. It seems to me to get it worked out of what's the best plan for you. So you spend once a year, you spend a lot of time on that. But I don't, I don't want old people to be defined by their health, good or bad. Mm -hmm. any more than somebody who is 30 is defined by their health. And I don't mean that in public policy. I mean that in general attitude toward old people. But let me be honest about something. When I go out to dinner with a bunch of people, and usually they're older, okay, because I don't hang around with kids anymore, um, it, it, the main topic of conversation at dinner becomes health. You know, how's your health doing? What the, uh, how, did you find a good doctor for that? Hey, wh what about your drug plan? Have you got a better drug plan than I do? I mean, all of a sudden, I mean, you don't even have to put it on the agenda. That becomes the topic du jour. Yes, and I think that I, I've been thinking about that very hard recently. And I think it's because most people are, are healthy through most of their lives that we don't much have to, th unless you're very unlucky and get some terrible diseases in your 20s, 30s, 40s, um, you go through life, you have a flu now and again, uh, different things happen, you go to the doctor, you have them fixed. But when you have 
after a certain age, it's just one damn thing after another because that is the nature of living a long life. I mean, you can die young and not have those problems or you can have a longer life. And our culture, our society doesn't prepare us for the amount of health problems we're going to have and the difficulties we're going to have making them work with the, with the healthcare community. Mm-hmm. And that gives us very good reason to be comparing notes a lot because we, we have no experience at it. It's brand new when you hit that age. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot to talk about and find out what your friends are doing. Um, when I was looking for a doctor, when a doctor just dismissed me with some symptoms saying, oh, don't worry about it, you know, it's, it's probably just a virus, and walked out of the room, I said, oh, I think I need a new doctor. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, well, I, I let, let, me, it, let me just remind people that you, a while back you had a touch of the cancer. <laughs> yeah, the touch of the I cancer. Mean, little, little Richard used that as an excuse why he didn't show up somewhere once by <laughs> saying... That phrase, exactly? Yes, yes, I had, I, <laughs> pardon me, I had a touch of the cancer. Yes, I had a touch of pancreatic cancer. <laughs> and I got incredibly lucky, and a few weeks ago, yeah. after some tests, CT scan and some other tests, they told me that I'm cancer-free. So, But I spent, for the past eight months, I have spent a lot of time with doctors and at medical centers. And um, But it struck me recently, and I've been rethinking some of, the, um, some of what I had been believing about it being unfair to characterize old people as uh, <laughs> mostly just talking about what some people call their organ recitals. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I've really come to like the phrase now. <laughs> you know? and, um, and, and of course we're interested because there's just so damned much of it. If you yourself are healthy, you know people who aren't or who just got a terrible diagnosis or have chronic diseases that are hard to work with Um, and we don't have any information about living with these things until we get old so why shouldn't we be talking about it with our friends well I I, yeah but I'm saying that when you get together with other old people that becomes a major topic I mean uh, and I just told you why (laughs) yeah yeah so you know I mean uh, I mean I find that I'm always talking about it well, I was always talking about it when I was in my 30s. So, yeah, 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 yeah. There's that hypochondriac word, you know. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I, I found out that I was always a hypochondriac when times were good. When times are bad, I wasn't hypochondriacal. In other words, if I, when I was out of work and things, I was scraping for a job, didn't get feel sick at all, Right. But the minute everything I'll give you was that, good, but it's not my memory. Uh, oh, oh, you don't remember it that way. I see. No, okay. I don't. All right. By uh, the way, speaking of memory, mm-hmm. I have a story from our marriage years. Oh God! Do, sure do, do we want to drag out that? I, what? Okay, go ahead. No, and I'm not sure I remember it properly. So I want to tell you, and I want you see how you remember it. Okay. 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 And this came up because the other day. I realized that I, this must be the time of year for it. There are tons of commercials on television about dating websites. You know, yeah. you go in and yeah. record things. And uh, there's there's been a push since Christmas of, of commercials on this. And I thought about this is early 60s. You were doing the show in Houston. I was producing it. Mm-hmm. And one of the very earliest dating systems... Uh, came to us about doing a show about it and this was one where you had to mail away remember the old this is snail mail Mm -hmm. and then they would send you a long form you had to fill out and answer questions about all the things you were and were interested in and cared about and that sort of stuff then you had to mail it back and what they were going to do for our show is put it through their database if there was such a thing as a database in the early uh, 60s and uh, I guess it was mid 60s there was but they were all on these these punch cards (laughs) <laughs> okay, well, anyway, they would put it through their system in some yeah. manner. And what they were going to do for the show is they would have the closest match of whatever people said they wanted in the opposite sex, um, because we weren't doing gay people back in those days. Um, uh, they would find the people who were most closely matched. And I then yeah. they got to go out to dinner and go to something or another, and it was all paid for. I remember that much, and I'm confident in that part of the memory, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, 
What I also remember, but I'm not sure if it's so, is that some time later, month, weeks or months, the guy in the couple that they found yes. the closest yeah. Oh, hold on a second. Was arrested for. Wait a minute. We're, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. We're breaking up here a little bit. Let me. Let's just pause a second. Okay. He was arrested. Yeah. And I think it was for um, doing things you shouldn't do with little boys. Do I remember that correctly? You do remember that correctly. We had a. We had a. They had a date. I remember that she didn't like him. It, it turned out okay, to be. A, I don't have any memory. It of that, turned out to be a flop of a date, if I remember correctly. And then several months later, he was arrested for uh, pederasty or whatever. Okay, so I, I, I'm not fooling myself. Yeah, it really yeah. did happen. I think that was the end of me ever running dating contests on radio. <laughs> yeah, I think, so. I think so. Just wanted to check on. Yeah, that, I do you know, remember that. I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. I remember how it turned out, which was not uh, not not nice. No, <laughs> not, not nice. Um, so, what would you say then? Are uh, you say the major concerns of people in your group, your 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 audience, is is the same things that are affecting kids? Because I don't think kids care too much about what's going on. I don't think they give a shit whether no, no, Trump's no, president say, or not. I'm not comparing them to kids. I'm just saying that old people aren't, aren't all that different from people of every other age, yeah. every other, you know, adults of any other age. You have to say, some are really concerned with politics and, you know, and, and sometimes I veer over into it since this past election. Um, others, I get cancellations when I write about Trump or the federal government sometimes, or they don't, there are people who yeah. don't want to read that stuff. And so they, right. they unsubscribe. Um, and, uh, politics and books and their grandchildren and their families and whatever they've had all their lives. They're not yeah. any different than they were at 40, except they don't have to get up and go to work. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's important. I think, I think that we separate old people so much from the West, rest of the culture. You don't go to work anymore. Nobody's interested in what you think anymore. Uh, they care, I guess, at voting time because we vote in larger numbers. But people don't really know what we're like. They think we're crippled and sick and um, and have probably forgotten anything we ever knew, if we knew anything to begin with. You cross this divide. There's a certain moment. Well, I mean, we, we mentioned this, we mentioned this uh, the last time we talked, I think, and that is that with the younger people, uh, we, well, with the rest of the population, as the older you get, the more invisible you become. Right. You know, I mean, I walk down the street now, and I doubt if anybody really pays any attention to me. Where in the old days, you know, some people would pay attention to me. You know, this is really, I read something really interesting online somewhere about that, that women learn this much younger than men do. Mm -hmm. There's a certain place, usually between 35 and 40, maybe a little past 40, when you just you walk down the street and you realize or in a store or anything you're invisible absolutely invisible exactly what you're saying men don't get that they get a few more years up to a decade longer than women before you guys <laughs> yeah, okay. get it okay i know i agree yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and then you get it and uh we're losing a lot of expertise you know old people lots of old people uh volunteer and are really interested in that and giving back and that's one of the places where young people, very young people, particularly teens and 20s, cross over with old people and get to know each other on volunteer organizations, whether it's their church or Meals on Wheels mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, food pantries or whatever it is that they, they do to volunteer. That's where different age groups, it's one of the few places where they commonly come together. It's a good thing. Yeah. Now, I, I would say that because of your subject matter, uh, you, 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 your your audience isn't necessarily left or right, okay? Because the things you're talking about are not political. At this, at that, let me get up to this. Uh, uh, but you can't avoid dealing with Trump and with how no, he and, and what he would how he would affect and how he is affecting older people. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and so do you get any heat from like your readers who are like Trump fans saying, oh, no, it isn't that bad, you know, trying to justify uh, it? Here's an interesting tidbit about Republicans of a certain kind and and. I don't have those readers because they they unsubscribe all the time or quit coming to the site. And the reason is, and if they don't go away, um, they, unlike <laughs> unlike Democrats, you've got to say it, are so vile in their comments. And they attack me or they attack other people who have commented that they don't agree with in really nasty ways. Democrats don't do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I've had a rule on my blog for a decade or more is that you can argue argue is a good thing let's have a good discussion but you cannot attack me personally or anybody else who has written in the comments personally and they invariably do the republicans or the trump supporters so and and i and if you do it you only get one chance at that on my blog all these years if you do that it's i delete it and i block you from ever commenting again no recourse i don't tell you it's just done you won't be allowed to comment ever again because it's it destroys a conversation yes if you allow yeah, that absolutely. To go on. absolutely so they don't stick around is what i'm saying yeah so in other words, they, so do you feel that your audience then is more to the left than it is to the right? Yes, and that's very interesting considering that uh, the oldest generation is mostly Republican or lean right wing. Why, why would the older population be Republican? Do liberals die early because you know, we I did all those really drugs or whatever? It's always been that way, is, and that people as they get older become more conservative. conservative and they don't understand that except you don't want the do you not want the world to change well i think mm-hmm. p- part of the problem is that as you get older you have more of a vested interest in this country well, and you've made a made a living maybe you've made a lot of money and therefore money sometimes i mean i'm i've made a lot of money in my time and i never found myself going conservative I never found myself going right ever 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 okay but a lot of people I know who, the minute they made money, all of a sudden became conservatives, became right wingers. You know, and uh, and and you may be right. Older people are probably more conservative than younger people. Well, that's what what all the surveys show, um, and I don't. I, it really annoys me <laughs> because. Uh, particularly this administration, more than the Republicans when we were younger, mm-hmm. um, uh, really wants to destroy the safety net, not just for old people, although it's mostly for old people, but there's plenty there for younger people, disabled people, uh, and there's systematically both Trump and the people he's appointed to those um, th- th- those cabinet posts are are systematically doing away with them. I mean, they, they, since they can't just vote Medicare out or Social Security, they keep picking away at it, little pieces, a little piece here, a little piece there, each year as much as they can. Uh, and it just keeps getting to be more and more difficult uh, for people who need those services. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and a lot of old people go along with that. And I find that really <laughs> disturbing. <laughs> I don't. I don't understand voting against your own best interests. I just don't get it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't see why a person who is over the age of sixty-five would vote for somebody who's against Medicare, as an example. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, because there's, uh, there's no reason to be against Medicare if you're an older person. <laughs> you know, I was so healthy all my life that I didn't know much about it um, until I got sick last June. Yeah. And I've now spent eight or nine months Medicare, with Medicare, the supplemental that I bought, and the Part D prescription drug pen. And it has covered everything. Nobody has ever questioned anything that the doctors wanted to do. It was just done and it was paid for, for the most part. In fact, the most expensive part of my treatment is the drugs. I pay a much higher percentage, way higher percentage for drugs, even though I'm doing fairly well. I've got good prices on my drugs. Uh, than I did for any of the procedures and surgeries right. and office visits and that sort of thing. Um, and it's simple. I don't do anything. I walk in. We have our. We do whatever we're going to do. The doctors and the nurses and me. Mm-hmm. And they take care of all the paperwork. I don't do anything. 
Right. You know, the only the only hard one I've had is choosing a, a Part D plan, a, a prescription drug plan every year because they change every single year. And the drug that was cost almost nothing last year can be triple, even quite, well, we all know about Martin Shkreli, you know, thousands of times more expensive than it was last year. And he's not the only one doing it. Drug companies are doing it too, oh, just oh, not quite uh, so uh, flamboyantly. I'll give you an example of something. Uh, my uh, the one pill I do take uh, that's expensive is Cialis, and I take it for uh, benign prostate hyperplasia. I don't take it because I need a boner. Uh, I'm getting too old to need one anyway. So uh, uh, it, it, you know, I and and I'm fighting to get uh, the company to you know my doctor's written a letter of necessity and we'll see what happens but i read that medicare absolutely will not pay for it because it is like 325 dollars a month which is that wow that's that's for daily cialis which is what you take for bph 325 dollars is the going rate uh, on on cialis so Medicare won't even pay for Cialis, no matter what's wrong with you, but they will pay if you want to have a penis pump installed. <laughs> That's very funny. Is, 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 is the reason that you're using Cialis, is that an accepted, yes. officially yes. accepted FDA FDA the has FDA approved, use of Javik? FDA has approved Cialis for, for benign prostate hyperplasia, yeah. That they found so that the that side benefit of, of Seattle. Medicare, does it? Huh? Yeah, I, I know. Think that makes much sense about Medicare. I think it's because the drug is so damn expensive. You know, and they think, I think part of their problem is they want, they want you to justify, they want your doctors to justify it because a lot of people would say, well, I've got a big prostate, I need it. But what they really need it for uh, is the bone. Of course they would. Okay. Sure they would. You yeah. know, so, so. I can understand for that reason for them questioning it, but they still should uh, pay for it once a doctor has yeah, but i don't know if medicare part d does. does i i read that it will not take care of cialis under any conditions you know so know. yeah whatever you know it that's that's the way things go but i what what insurance do you have as a supplemental that has been good for you uh it's the one from aarp yeah ARP has usually been the best, and and part and you know they they label the different kinds A B C D you know E yeah. through I don't know whatever I use F which is the most comprehensive one and yeah. probably the most. Expensive. How much do they charge a month for that? Now, pe- right I, now I, I'm paying about two twenty five. Now you see two twenty five. She's paying two twenty five. I'm paying for my supplemental at the Union a uh, hundred and seventy eight dollars a month, mm-hmm. uh, and that includes dental and pharmacy. As well. Oh, I have no dental. Let's see, uh, I've got thirty-five thousand yeah, dollars yeah. worth of dental work in my mouth. But that's about the, the reason why I've got like one of the best plans. I mean, it really they really do take care of you, this union. But anyway, uh, it, the the fact is that people don't realize that just because you've got Medicare, it only takes care of eighty percent. You got to fill in that other twenty percent, so you get a supplemental, the supplement. and the supplemental is like for her two hundred twenty-three dollars a month. You know, so. I mean, uh, well, if you look at that compared to two things, yeah. the amount of money that I would have had to pay out of pocket mm-hmm. that I don't have to pay during these last yeah, right. eight, nine months. I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars we're talking about. I just couldn't have had the treatment. I don't have that kind of money. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the other side of it. Um, there's no recourse if you don't. If you don't have the coverage right. and you don't right. have the money, right? You so go home and anyway, and just, you know. But uh, we're just telling you folks this so you know what to plan for in the future. This is your your life coming up, and uh, all the things you're going to have to deal with and and figure out, and um, uh, you're going to have to. You know, that's one of the things that worries me. That after my surgery, there were several weeks where I have, as some people call it. Um, anesthesia brain and then after I started chemo chemo brain and I didn't think quite arrogantly I didn't think it really affected me much it took me until I started getting over it to realize how impaired my thinking had been in my case it was particularly slow and sometimes in the early time soon after the surgery and soon and during the chemo I would go to read a sentence and I could feel a little hiccup of space as I read through the sentence that I understood each word but it took a part of a second for me to put the whole sentence together to right, what it means. Right. 
And it's not, yeah. and now that's gone away again, now that I've got enough distance between me and those events. But what about people yeah. who they can take care of themselves, they can get things done, they live on their own or not, but um, but they're slower than they used to be. Everything gets slower as yeah. you get older. Yeah. Yeah. And how do they deal with There were times when I was near tears during the two days I went through trying to figure out a new Part D, if I wanted a new Part D uh, mm -hmm. And policy, and um, and if if I had been trying to do that with chemo brain, I'm not so sure I could have done it at mm -hmm. all. Hey, listen, I looked at the clock. We have we have whizzed past 25 minutes. <laughs> And um, uh, I'm not sure we should subject people to watching this. You oh, know, well, I think so. I think so. I think it's important for them to hear, and I think you're very informed on this area. And everything else, I disagree with you. But on this area, <laughs> it's my job as an ex-husband. I've got to. I've got to. I've got to take that position, Ronnie. I to what? Talk what? to you about the Oscars. Oh well, what about the Oscars? Uh, it, Forget it, about it. We can go a couple of more minutes. The hell with this audience. What? Yeah, the Oscars. <laughs> Did you watch? Did I watch the Oscars? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I watched them. Well, I was, I'm writing about it for tomorrow, so that's what's on my brain for my blog post tomorrow. I have very mixed feelings about it. It was kind of exciting, you know, the diversity um, and the inclusion of, you know, Muslims and um, uh, immigrants and people of all kinds of ethnic backgrounds, and women, of course, coming off, starting with Harvey Weinstein, that seems to have changed things yeah. for a while. But I had very mixed feelings. You also had, if you remember, um, Bullock, Sandra Bullock, mm -hmm. when she came out on stage, I think she was doing a presentation, she said, lower the lights. She said, no, lower them further. Lower them further. I don't want people to know how old I am. I wanted to smash your face. To the <laughs> There's nothing wrong with getting old. And Jane Fonda did the same kind of thing when she came out with Helen Mirren. She said something, and I think that um, Helen Mirren's in her early 70s. I think Jane Fonda is 80. Yeah. And she said, well, it's gl I'm glad to know that somebody like Oscar, it was the 90th Oscar, yeah. is older than we are. I'm... This is this is how pervasive ageism is, and how hated old people are. Nobody will say we hate old people. Yeah, but that's but you've the kind got of to appreciate that goes on in it, every place. If you if you put Jane Fonda, a master class in facial reconstruction, okay, <laughs> next to Helen Mirren, who has old gotten old with grace, okay, I'll take yeah. Helen Mirren every day, you know. Uh, She's quite a lady. <laughs> She's quite a lady. And she knows how to give away a jet ski, too. So, you know. <laughs> Wasn't that funny? I thought that was the weirdest thing. <laughs> Apparently, nobody wanted it except that one guy. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Hey, it also got the lowest ratings of any Oscar show ever. Really? Like you and me and all of our friends, I think it's fading from society. No, I don't think it's fading. I think that the problem this year was is that most of the results were predictable. They were all very predictable. Oh, I have to tell you something funny about one of the results. Yeah. What I discovered now that I'm, you know, for the time being, it can always recur, but for the time being, I'm free of pancreatic cancer. I have discovered I don't want to hear the word anymore, right? Right. And I just, you know, let it go mm -hmm. and get on with living. And of course, every time I turn around, yeah. somebody is talking about pancreatic cancer or it's a plot point in a movie. It <laughs> drives me crazy. <laughs> so like, before the Oscars, I decided that I, I liked it because of the actress, the star, but I also love the name of three billboards outside <laughs> Ebbing, Minnesota or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah. And uh, so the night before, I pulled it up on Amazon on television and watched it, and I find out the sheriff has got pancreatic cancer. <laughs> it's a big, big... <laughs> well, I'm happy because the film I want... About it for 35 years, and now it's everywhere. <laughs> the film that won is the film I wanted to have win, so I was very happy with it. You know, it's one of the few years the one I rooted for won. I didn't think Shape of Water would win, but it did. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but it is a beautiful movie. You would love it. You would. Lo I know what you like and don't like, and you would love this film. <laughs> How do you know 
my tastes haven't changed. Well, I think, no, I, you have always been, uh, you've always kind of liked things that had a certain, um, f almost a, a fairy tale quality. I don't know how to describe it, but. No, not fairy tale. Well, anyway, this is the creature that, from the Black Lagoon meets beauty, you know, and it, uh, it's, it's a wonderful picture and wonderfully acted and the cinematography everything terrific anyway hey listen we got to go otherwise this audience is going to be mad because i'm not going to be talking to them it's worth talking to you okay oh don't so, say that about your your viewers i know they know That's i give them nice. i give them a bad time okay oh, all right okay. all right i give them a bad time but and they know right. that till next time so uh, till next time ladies and gentlemen that is as i say my uh, former ex-wife i don't know how you describe it now uh, Ronnie Bennett, the only one in this group who actually legally has the last name Bennett. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.